Hi, a very warm welcome to Dusty Shelf Collectibles. Today, Rail Riders. Yeah, hi, so uh, as you may have seen on one of my previous videos, I've had all kinds of computer problems. I completely fried my laptop. Um, finally got together, building a completely new tower. It's all come together and I'm installing software at the moment. So hopefully I'll be back to editing something reasonable soon. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna keep, keep to sort of short videos just for the time being. But I thought I'd touch on rail riders for this video. Um, so I'm not going to talk about the current club. Um, if you uh, if you search online, you'll find Rail Riders, um, and certainly Hornby are offering a discount um, membership, five pound off the membership. I think if you uh, if you join the sort of um, Hornby Collectors Club, there's sort of an affiliation there. I'm not talking about that one. That's more aimed at sort of the adult uh, market and sort of visiting rail centres, that kind of thing. Yes, the club I want to talk about is the one that was set up uh, between, well it started in 1981, um, set up by British Rail and ran right through to 1991, so 10 year span. And uh, as a youngster I was a member of this club and it was wonderful, I loved every moment of it. It was, you know, it was fantastic um, for a young enthusiast looking at railways, it was absolutely brilliant and uh, I just thought I've, I've got a few bits left that um, still that I've kept over the years um, and I thought I'd show you those and I'll just review this 1985 release of a class 47 diesel uh, named Rail Riders um, but we'll come back to that in a moment so um, as I say that you, you joined this joined this club it was all through British Rail and they um, sent you a little you know pack to join and in that pack you got uh, a book full of vouchers um, that the thing is, as a child, what was great about these is these were like checks, and you you filled them out, and um, then you got uh, some some money off of rail travel. Uh, and at the back here, there's these little squares uh, with Rail Riders logo on there, and you take one of those out. And the British Rail had got an affiliation with attractions all over the UK, and when you went to one of these attractions, you'd hand in one of these little little stamps at the back, and they would give you. Um, a sticker. Um, I've got a couple here of places I went to. There's one there, Windsor Safari Park. Uh, what's this one? Bala Lake. Um, Cone Valley Railway. So yeah, there's various stickers there. Um, and once you'd got these stickers from these affiliated um, attractions, if you like, you also got in your welcome pack this wall poster. Now this is actually mine that I had in my room when I was uh, very very young and at the top here are all of the attractions where you could visit and get one of your stickers and you take these stickers and obviously you'd stick them onto your wall chart. What a fantastic idea you know to, to link the railways into all these different attractions. I just wish somebody would do something like this now for youngsters. I mean I assume there would be the interest. Like I say, Rail Riders itself has reformed, um, but completely separate to British Rail. It's, it's a, it's, although it's got the same name and a similar logo and things, it's a completely different entity um, run by some enthusiasts, I believe. And they organise like meet, meeting meeting up events at um, heritage centres and things. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's still discounts on there for British Rail, but it's, it's a different entity. So I, thought, I thought what we'd do is go and have a quick look through this wall chart because I mean this is this is about three and a half meters long, um, and just to just if you can picture it, my my bedroom as a I don't know nine ten year old, I had the bed on one side, I had a model railway running all the way down the other side of the room. It was quite you know it wasn't a particularly big room. There was a bed, small gap to the model railway that ran down the other wall, and then all around the top of the freeze of the room was this this poster. It just ran underneath the you know sort of a freeze around the top of the room and um, yeah as I say I've kept it all these years and uh, it does make me smile so um, let's uh, let's take it over the bench and let's have a look through yes yeah, so as I say these are I mean these are getting on quite a few years old now I mean these are certainly from my childhood um, these are the various places that uh, I did get a sticker from at the time you can see them there um, these ones here this is uh, you can see here the Rail Riders emblem. These were the ones that actually came with your your, your sort of subscription pack, if you like. So these you sort of get started stickers. Um, 
and as I say, you 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 take these these little uh, sticker stamps, if you like, they call them on the back here, and you just peel those off and hand them in on anywhere that you visited. So let's just have a quick look through this freeze before we go on to the loco. Right, so let's have a look at this chart. What I'm going to try and do, because obviously it's so long, it's sort of folded into, into sections. So I'm going to try and do it three sections at a time and just talk about what's on here. Um, so yeah, the whole thing is sort of in chronological chronological order. I mean, it's obviously called the time chart, but it's starting right from the early sort of pre-industrialization room right through until what they what was the modern day in the 1980s. So um, starting over here, obviously you can see the Montpellier balloon at the top here, um, horse and cart carrying the pails of water, all the huge, you know the, the the sort of pre-industrialization world. We then move on to the spinning wheel. And you can see down the bottom here the the sort of hand labor cart pulling the coal and then down here quite interesting hobby horse the little bike here and the omni omnibus which um obviously is a forerunner of what we would call a you know what we would consider the bus or taxi etc in terms of the railways on here we've got um trevix loco yeah, i think that's puffing billy and we've got uh the furnace railway uh number three affectionately known as Copper Knob because of its boiler. And there's a couple of coaches over the back here, obviously, from the Liverpool Manchester Railway, pulled by the Rocket, typically. Um, and then over the, over here, we can see sort of the, the beginning of the railway infrastructure, you know, the viaducts and things starting to be built and a little bit more industrialisation being picked up. In terms of the attractions, so this is where you put your stickers from the attractions. So the first few here, these are what came with your welcome pack. You know, there's the Rail Rider sticker that I showed earlier etc and then going forward we've got Aberystwyth, Aberystwyth Cliff Railway, we've got the Battle of Britain Museum in Hendon, um, I did a video on that recently now known as the RAF Museum if you want to have a look at that it's just me walking around having a look at the aircraft. Uh, Beamish is in there, the Beamish Open Air Museum and uh, there's Blackpool Pleasure Beach and um, we've got a couple of videos on that coming soon. Um, so let's move on to the next three pages. Oh, just before I do that, down the bottom here, I think this is the um, introduction of the right-of-way lines by the look of it. You know, the machine for um, with the tokens to uh, allow uh, a single lane to be moved in both ways. And then you can see the first introduction of the railway signal just as we cross over to the next three pages. So let me just move this along. As I say, it's, it's an absolute monster, this, and... Uh, quite difficult to manage across the bench right so down here we've got a, a sterling loco um, and you can see the chimney sweep um, and as we move into sort of the proper industrial revolution you can see the blast furnace here um, you can actually see the first blast first first ever blast furnaces if you go into Telford in Shropshire um, obviously Ironbridge Gorge They've still got uh, remnants of the very first of those. Um, and then over the back here, we've got a couple of steamships. I'm assuming these are Brunel's Great Eastern, Great Western, maybe, I'm not totally sure. And you can see the expansion of the mills here and the bottle kilns. Um, along the bottom also, you can see the costumes gradually changing. And now we get down right in the corner here, the penny farthing. Um, in terms of the attractions, what we got on here? So Chester, Cornwall Aero Park, uh, what we've got, uh, Dinting Railway Centre, I've not heard of that one, um, Dole Motor Museum in Perthshire, Drusilla's Park and Edinburgh Zoo, not totally sure on this engine, um, that one's not familiar to me, I'll have to look that one up. Right, let's move on to the next few pages, so let me get myself organised. Right, so as I mentioned the bottle kilns, as I've moved it across, I'll just pick up where I left off, so bottle kilns here you can see over the back there the fourth bridge um and in terms of the locos what we got we got the uh, midland railway 156 class there and then moving into the star class locos from the great western here um across the bottom you can see the costume change we've got the introduction of the street lamp here and um then just coming over into this corner We've got um, the, I can't remember who did these street lamps. They're all along the embankment in London. Very famous street lamps with the, the sort of fish wrapped around them. Um, don't know, I'll have to look that one up. And obviously introduction of the motor car and, and the conventional bicycle with the chain on there. Um, 
across the top um, you can see here aircraft being introduced um, trams obviously the towns and cities being built up um, traction wise let's have a look at the top here so we've obviously got Exeter Cathedral there we've got the Great Northern Hotel the Imperial Collection Naysborough Zoo um, Nounsley Safari Park I think that's West Midland Safari Park now um, and there's the London Transport Museum I'm just looking across over here we've got Morecambe Leisure Park I think that's long gone oh, more, that's Morecambe Leisure Park sorry this is Morecambe Pleasure Park that's long gone I know that um, and then Neem Valley Railway I'll tell you what's fascinating about this is every time I come back to it and look at it I'm seeing more and more little things in here um, yeah it's, it's uh, you know you can see here I just noticed over here you've got the, so that looks like the outbreak of the first world war and we've got zeppelins and uh, biplanes over the top there and then coming through here we've got uh, the uh, schneider trophy winning spitfire i was call it spitfire but it was uh, obviously mitchell's design there um and that's i can't remember the name of that plane but that was the first i think that was commercial flight um not particularly sure on this loco i need to look that one up that's not um not overly familiar to me but again you can see how the cars are changing down the bottom here um and uh, obviously uh, 1930s i would guess this is 1920s 1930s you can see the the outfits changing there then over the back there we've got uh, the queen mary i'm guessing that's the queen mary odeon cinemas like I say, every time you look at this, there's just more and more things sort of jumping out, little details in the picture. It is, I never really appreciated it when I was younger. It was just a freeze with trains on. And uh, then the loco here, you can see the uh, A4 Silver Link, and over the bot there, back there, obviously, the uh, Coronation class running through there. And uh, we're just moving into, over this side, the, the Blitz, um, uh, obviously, Second World War. There you see the uh, dog fighting at the top there. Again, tractions across the top. So, I mean, what have we got on here? We've got uh, the Scarborough Express, uh, Platform 3 model railways, not sure of that one. Um, can't read what that one is, actually. The Scottish Experience, Seven Valley Railway. Oh, these are all Seven Valley Railway. So these are a sticker for each of the stations that you visit on the Seven Valley, Valley Railway. And the Museum of Scottish Tartan. Um, over here we've got the Shuttleworth Collection, The Sound of Music, Stirling Castle, um, Steamtown Railway Museum, I'm not, I've never heard of Steamtown, I'll look that one up, I don't know if it still exists. The Tram Museum, I've been there, That's that was uh, quite interesting, and obviously Twy Cross Zoo. Um, so you can see it's quite a varied range of attractions, um, and um, as I said in the introduction, I'd, it'd be great if somebody did this now. You know sort of linked in to use the railways to get to get to these attractions and um you know give the kids something for going there to sort of collect i just think it's such a great idea but um yeah the world moves on uh let's move on to the next few pages yes yeah, so as i say this this one i'm just crossing over because there's still so much information so the blitz shown here um, and you can see down the bottom here the underground and people sleeping on the station and then introduction of the TV here with BBC um, And then this and you see over the back here. I think this is the festival of Britain um, So where festival hall is on the South Bank of London um, Obviously the, the festival hall is still there, but this whole, that whole area was developed for, to uh, to uh, showcase the UK um, And this bit here this was like the central um, uh, focal point if you like and it was sort of a i understand it i mean i know it was long before my time but this was a um sort of a, a, a statue if you like of a sort of floating shard i guess um you know and uh, the way it was held with wires it just looked like it was floating in space um in terms of the locos on this one obviously we've got uh, we've got the britannia class down the bottom here Gosh, struggling to keep this on the on the bench Got the Britannia class here, obviously high rise buildings coming in um, and uh, first helicopter over here. That looks like a Triumph Herald, so obviously the cars are moving forward. Um, and we've got um, the airport here, so the Sea Link over to the Isle of Wight, obviously the ferry service. Got a video around Portsmouth Dockyard where you can see um, uh, see the ferry going across. Uh, and we've got Woburn Wild Animal Kingdom, that's Woburn Safari Park now. The Isle of Wight Steam Railway, uh, Yorkshire Dales Railway, 
And then finally, before we run out of attractions, we've got uh, York Model Railway, which was actually set up by British Rail um, in conjunction with Rail Riders. So this was like the sort of key attraction. And uh, when the Rail Riders finished in 1991, it was sold off to uh, a private owner and subsequently moved out of the York um, station. It was, it was to the right-hand side of the entrance to York Station and uh, had a fantastic model shop attached to it as well. But uh, I'm not sure where that's gone or whether it's still going, but uh, it's no longer in York. And then moving on to the final few sections. Right, let's have a look at this final section. So obviously 1960s, we've got the Mini in there. We've got the 60s clothes. Uh, introduction of sort of the computerized rail network. You can see uh, obviously much more control rather than the manual signals. And then into the 1980s and uh, right up to date with them. Uh, Austin Metro there. Uh, and in terms of the locos, we've obviously got the uh, Class A Bobo Electric there. We've got the uh, Deltic, the Intercity 125, and then state-of-the-art, the APT. Um, and then coming across here, as I mentioned, the airport, we've got homes with drives. Um, like I say, every time I look at this, I see something something else. I just spotted the hovercraft there, um, and the oil rig over the back there. Uh, that looks like the Seven Bridge. There's a monorail here. I don't know where that's supposed to represent. And up the top... Saturn V, we got Vulcan, we got the uh, Jumbo Jet, Concorde, and the Space Shuttle. And then I guess if this has carried on running, these would be where you put your additional attractions that joined, you know, these extra space for, for all of the different badges that you'd get. So I just, I mean, I've kept this all these years, and as I say, as a as a kid when I looked at it, it was, um, you know, it... Uh, it was just a just a freeze with trains on, but now when I look at it, there's so many little details in here. It is absolutely a fabulous piece of art. So uh, this won't be going anywhere soon from my collection. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Um, let's move on to the loco. And let's come on to the loco. So, um, Class 47, um, built in, from 1962 to 1968. There are 512 of these made. Um, this one is very specific, as I say, it is rail riders, as you can see on the on the uh, naming tag on the side there, and you see on the end of the box here, it's R354 British Rail Class 47 Rail Riders. Um, and the, yeah, this model came out in 1985, sadly I don't have an 85 catalogue, so I couldn't see if it was in there, but uh, right, on to opening the box, you can see this has been torn open before, so I'm just going to slide my ruler through and use the little technique of applying a little bit of pressure just to lever the lever the flap open so I don't make things worse. There it goes. And let's slide the model out. Um, I've got a couple of instructions in here which probably sort of quick look. So locomotive operation. I won't go into too much detail on that. You can see there. Just telling you the usual maintenance etc. And then what's this one? Oh wow, this is showing its age. So yeah, instructions for mounting the, uh, fitting the modules for the Zero One, which was uh, obviously Hornby's uh, first attempt at sort of digital, um, digital uh, introduction into the model railways. Um, we'll do a video on the Zero One uh, later, later on, I guess. Right, and then in terms of the model, um, let me just slide that out very gently. It's in beautiful condition, this one. Though. It's barely been run. And you can see, uh, you know, it's a really wonderful model. Wonderful condition, I mean. I mean, very basic model, but a wonderful condition. I'm guessing this is one of the early trying uh, mouldings that carried forward into Hornby. So yeah, that's the Rail Riders uh, model. I'm, I mean, I'm guessing these are quite collectible. If you if you were ever a member of Rail Riders, then uh, this is certainly one to have in, in your collection. So yeah, and uh, I'll leave this video there. We'll go and give this a quick run up and down the track and I'll leave it with footage. Um, but anyway, I thought that might be of interest. So um, yeah, we'll leave it there. Thank you ever so much for joining me and I'll catch you on the next one.